everything. Yeah. And I decided that I had like, I had too much of a biases against the female events. All right, guys, we are here hanging out in Louisville, Kentucky. I'm Abby Fish. I'm here with Nate Knopf. And we decided that, you know, during this time of isolation and potential self quarantines and pretty much no sports happening in the world, uh, we needed to bring you guys some fresh content on swimming. Uh, so we brought in Nate. I'll let Nate take the floor and introduce himself. Now, don't worry, this is as close as we have gotten. I'm going to wipe down the entire house. I kicked all the other members of my house out. <laughs> uh, she hasn't really touched very much. It's really most of her stuff. So we're being smart and we're being safe, unlike the people who were at all the bars last night on sure. Town Road. It's ridiculous. <laughs> Come on, guys. Get it together. It Seriously. Better. All right. So uh, I'm Nate Knopf. Mm -hmm. uh, I have been involved in swimming for most of my life. Uh, I started in swimming because I was bad at all the other sports. And I was still so bad at it. swimming. Yeah. But, but, like, we were already at the pool a lot anyways, so yeah. it kind of just worked out. Yeah. And I got better at swimming. Uh, I swam at Auburn from 01 to 05. Mm -hmm. I coached at Lakeside from, like, 07 to 16-ish. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that seems right. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so, coached with a lot of good people. Uh, spent a brief cup of coffee down in Nashville, worked with John down there. Yeah. Uh, and kind of throughout my coaching career was interested in quantifying a lot of uh, swimming. I feel like quantification is something that lends itself very easily to things that yeah. are defined by times mm -hmm. because it's like a, it's like a thing. Like you yeah. went this time. True. So, relative to the other people who have gone their times, yeah. you should be able to quantify all sorts of different stuff. Yeah. But, that is not what we are doing today. <laughs> we won't lie, Nate <coughs> is very much a numbers guy. So, on the back side of this podcast, we'll be talking about a event ranking list that he's ranked events on different categories. Yeah. Yes, different yeah. categories. Actually, let's uh, we'll chat about those real quick before we get rolling. Uh, so, lactate, mm -hmm. intensity and endurance. Um, so, why, might you ask, do I rank things on this? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Let uh, people know. Let let's, them know what they want. So, um, now, keep in mind, all of this, you know, as Hunter S. Thompson said, was done under duress. And as the great American philosopher Jalen Rose would say, this is out the trunk, right? <laughs> We yep. are barbershop talking, so despite the fact that I have uh, created a huge spreadsheet with rankings, um, let's <laughs> let's not confuse any of this with <laughs> right with anything that should be taken ultra seriously. In other words, just like do not blow up Abby's uh, Instagram or Twitter <laughs> mentions with anything other than good. Hey, thanks awesome. for bringing us the content, You're right? Welcome. Like, yeah, you know, someone had to do it. Somebody had to do something. It so, lactate. Yeah. Right? Like, swimming is an anaerobic sport. Like, even the distance events. Yeah. Right? Like, the 16.50 is 14 minutes now. Mm -hmm. Right? Like, that, that's not very long. Yeah. Um, so, it, it even like that event, right? It's like, you are just like, how long can we buffer until everything shuts down? Yeah. And you want to push that edge. Mm -hmm. And that's pretty much what every event is um, above a 50, which yeah. we'll get to. Uh, as to why those are grouped the way they are. Uh, intensity was kind of a generic ranking yeah. because I feel like there is an X factor with any event. Yeah. Um, and so I think that you need to be able to quantify that X factor. And mm -hmm. so like intensity was this generic way that I kind of quantified maybe athleticism and just like the sheer level of focus that it would take. Mm -hmm. To be successful in that event. And also, I apologize. I talk with my hands a lot. Um, you know, I'm noticing it now, like, in the camera. Right. Uh, and then finally, endurance, which I kind of quantified, not as, like, the strict definition of, like, I had to swim 10,000 three times a day yeah. in order to break the American record in Eric Vint's story. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. You know, it's True. like... That's not what endurance is. I quantify it more as like 
the amount of physiological training mm-hmm. or like the amount of physiological adaptation that you will need to do during training in order to be successful in an event. Yeah. Which is why you can like rank a 200 freestyle as like arguably as much of an endurance race as the mile yeah. because you're talking about different energy systems mm-hmm. and it's just kind of a different kind of race. Mm-hmm. But it doesn't mean that like the adaptation is any less, right? Yeah. I mean, we saw what Thorpe did. Dude was wild with it. Yeah, true. I mean, and like they published all of his sets, right? Yeah. It's all out there. And mm-hmm. it was just like, cool, I'm going to do 8,000 at MBO2 pace, yeah. right? For a year straight almost or, yeah. you know, whatever he's doing, right? Yeah. He's yeah. just like becoming a monster, mm-hmm. right? And mm-hmm. doing that and then he shows up on the world stage and he dominates. Yeah. So I think that, you know, that is an endurance thing too. Mm-hmm. So fair enough. So he, what inspired this event ranking list? Like, what made you think about? Oh, I want to take all tacos. These Abby, Genders, Abby, men, is, women. Abby is a known uh, food fan. Food fan, we'll and <laughs> uh, we cook a lot over here. Mm-hmm. Um, being two old Italian grandmothers that live in this house, which I include myself as. Uh, but no, we have tacos and we have friends over. Uh, it's easier than paying for tacos. True. I find. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so we were talking and I think I like threw some, I threw some heat about the two fly. Oh. Being a 200 butterfly. My bread and butter. Yeah. yeah. I was like, no, that's the weakest <laughs> of the 200s. <laughs> far and away. Far and away. And I was like, I will quantify it. <laughs> I was like, I will go through and rank everything and uh, quantify what I feel like yeah. is good and bad. And I feel like I'm about to share that. <laughs> Fair enough. So to give you guys some background on how I know Nate. So Nate coached at Lakeside, which is where we both grew up swimming. Mm-hmm. Um, but when he came back from Auburn, he started running our like dry land program and assisting our group. Yeah. So I was like coaching with y'all in the summers. Uh, yeah. For a minute. Like, I think I did that for two straight summers. Yeah. And then I was a, I think going into your senior year, I was the interim senior coach. I and then I took so. over full time. Yeah. Uh oh. I don't want the. Yeah. We so go. we've known each other for quite a long time. And even though Nate may not be presently coaching in the swimming world, Nate has always been involved in the swimming world. He is a I huge, check, I, I check huge swim, swim daily. swimming fan. Like. I stalk. I, I lurk <laughs> on the comment section because it's good. It's good commentary it's on this. the American condition. Yeah. <laughs> so, yes, uh, when it comes to swimming, Nate knows a lot. He's all, also, as Luke, we've been talking about, he's extremely analytical. So he looks at times. He knows events. He knows swimming history. Um, so, yeah, it's a great mind to be picking today for anybody who may not know of and all right so how do we want to start this all right so again i've ranked everything on a one to five scale with those three categories i summed them i sorted them i did short course long course male female so like there's as much specificity as i can so there are 68 total events right Mm -hmm. the you know uh 50 through uh mile uh and equivalents right 400 500 800,000, right those are all Uh, chopped up differently Mm -hmm. uh they're all chopped up differently between male and female uh because again i think that like you want to add as much complexity to the data as you can yeah um and all it meant was just like doing it several times over Mm -hmm. uh and then you want to specify between long course and short course because i mean like the 200 fly short course is a drastically different about event than the 200 fly long course oh yeah right like there's four less kickouts and if you're really good at kickouts you can just stay underwater yep then really you're only adapting to like the last, what, 65 meters mm-hmm. when you break out of that last, you know, 125 wall and you're really starting to hurt. Yeah. Whereas like the 200 fly long course, like, you I mean, Misty only Just did it, once. what, like once or twice, yeah. right? Like where she really was able to put it together because it was really hard. You're pushing that edge. Yeah, for sure. Um, all right. So this is the, uh, the 50 grouping. There are 10 total groupings, mm-hmm. like uh, when I scored everything out. I summed everything up and what I basically did was then ranked everything and there was a lot of ties as you would imagine since I'm only going one to five uh, which I actually kind of wanted because I wanted to be able to group things so then you could discuss things. So 68, 50 short course yard female backstroke, 67, uh, 50 and these four are ties actually. 
uh, 50 short course yards, breaststroke female, 50 long course breast male, 50 short course breast uh, male. Uh, so that was group number 10. Uh, they were uh, tied for 65th with five points apiece. Uh, and then right above that, you have the 50 long course meter fly female, 50 long course or 50 short course fly female. And these are tied again, 50 long course uh, meters uh, fly male, 50 short course fly male, 50 short course back male. Uh, so again, it's important to realize that like the scores are sixes and then fives down below that. Um, these events just didn't really, they seem like, I guess if I had to do this all over again and totally re-rank them in front of you, I would add an athleticism category Yeah. that would be maybe a little bit, it would help the intensity category yeah. be a little bit more specified. Mm-hmm. Because these events just kind of scored low, you know, throughout, with the exception of, like, the intensity of them. Yeah. Which, again, I, I, I think I kind of am using that as a proxy for athleticism. Mm -hmm. So they scored well there. But ultimately, I think that we've seen in short course swimming, and even in some long course swimming, where guys are able to just, like, hold on to it for forever. Yeah. Right? I mean, it's like, hey, I can still do a 50 fly. Yeah. At an elite level and go around Mira Nostrum and... Oops, yeah my water bottle make some money and mm -hmm. it's like so they're able to hold on to that whereas like you see in some of the other events that require more of that athletic adaptation where it's like they it goes away quick mm -hmm. and when it's gone it's gone yeah right like yeah. how quickly did Thor drop off yeah. like when he was done he was done mm -hmm. it was mm -hmm. like okay the 200 for, like the difference between being able to train and go 140 yeah is different than the or like or one forty four rather and is different than like the ability to be at like one forty like one forty eight to one forty four like it was a thin line yeah like it fell apart it fell apart yeah whereas like I think you see in some of these other events where it's like people are able to hold on a lot longer now that's not to say that these are easy events because <laughs> I certainly could not have ever done them I am not that athletic yeah. I am not that strong and yeah. powerful that you like. There's a baseline that yeah. you need yeah. for those things. Yeah. Uh, but in terms of the adaptation required, and I think like when you see, we see the like relays recovery as well. Right. Yeah. yeah. Like the relays. Right. When you see the relays in um, NCAA's, it's yeah. like it's usually the same four to six people on a team swimming everything. Yep. Right. And so they're able to bounce back quick, especially mm -hmm. from those 200 relays, right? Yeah. Like in the first day, you'll swim the 53 three times potentially, Yeah. right? If mm -hmm. you're the big stud, mm -hmm. you know, or like you'll be like Fred was when he was at Auburn with us and he did yeah. fly and we had somebody else do free, mm -hmm. even though he had just broken 19 for the first time. Yeah. He still did fly. Yeah. But it was like, because it was actually better for him Yeah. because he could just bounce back quick from that. He yeah. Could, he could do a 50 fly or at least I think that's what happened yeah yeah no I, I mean yeah so caveat just to let everyone know there is going to be a downloadable spreadsheet of this event right yes here, so you can actually look at what we we're talking about I provide my work it's kind of hard to be giving you guys all these numbers and all these rankings with you guys not being able to look at the excel sheet itself yes so it will be available and because we're not trying to bore you to death with our content with you our, know, you know analytics. here's this spreadsheet look yeah. at all this data so technically i work in corporate america that no. happens all the time they just put these spreadsheets up and they're like here look at this spreadsheet yeah and i'm like cool like yeah. i don't know you're gonna have to give me more than that here you go so right. 50 that back female that's the very last event well i mean so Vegas. like i well i just ended up sorting and you know i like i had to end up sorting by mm -hmm. the uh i wrote it all out basically as like the event order that you would see in a state records Got book it. okay and then ranked them that way and then did like broke them out as like Long course meters, short course yards, mm -hmm. male, female. Gotcha. So, like, then, because that's how I, like, had arranged it initially when I sorted them, mm -hmm. that's how it is. So, it's, like, it's actually a tie between, like, uh, male, breast, uh, short course and long course, mm -hmm. female, short course breast, and female, short course back. Okay. For, like, the lowest... 
Yes. What would you say overall for those events? How yeah, I mean, events? yeah, it's like I'm actually kind of surprised that like the short course yard backstroke for females fell as far, but I mean, mm-hmm. I guess in looking at it, it's like again, it's it's kickouts and it's yeah. just speed and athleticism, mm-hmm. and it's like I think you see that. Yeah. Um, I think with at, on the men's side, the just it's pro- I think it's at the next level, and it's like yeah. Just that there's a, a slight touch more intensity that's needed. Mm-hmm. Like when you watch those guys who are swimming in going 20 point, right? They're yeah. exploding through the start, yeah. right? And yeah. it's like you're having to like angle it at, at a way that you are carrying all this speed and breaking out because you could easily go 25 yards mm-hmm. at the rate you're going, yeah. right? Like so yeah. it's like you're having to force the breakout. So mm-hmm. it's like they're really holding on to that edge. So there's a, a slight touch more in intensity. But mm-hmm. again, I think it's... It's a function of athleticism more than it is training. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, and again, the there is the, I guess, the argument to be made that it's like, oh, hey, there's going to be a lot of weight room stuff, and there's going to be a lot of... Yeah, well, that's what I was going to say. Are you equating mental athleticism in some ways to power production? Uh, it can be, mm-hmm. right? I mean, because I think that there is a certain amount of, you know... I mean, so a- as I've aged, I've had to figure out ways to continue to make myself healthy if I'm going to uh, continue to work out and not be injured all the time True. and yoga has been a good thing yes right yeah. so I've become like more centered and more aware and mm-hmm. it's like as I've done that I've been able to like do what you're supposed to do where you carry that through to other things yeah uh in your life and it's like especially with swimming like you really it's core centric yeah uh so I mean there's definitely an argument to be made for like these people are like they're very strong they're very fit they're mm-hmm. very athletic um But I think that you get knocked from the fact that you're able to just do these things over and over and over again. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So they're very different than than something where it's like, if you do it twice, like, that's devastating. Mm -hmm. Right? Whereas, like, some of the bigger events that are going to take more out of you, it's like, you can't do a 400 IM at the same rate that you can do a 50 short course backstroke. Oh, for sure. Right. So it's like, when you're ranking them, you have to take advantage of that. Yeah. So what's next up all past the 50s? All right. Well, there's still some more 50s. There's also hot take. <laughs> <laughs> Can't wait. Uh, because I get to talk smack about myself, basically. There you go. All right. So you have two groups. You have the eights, mm-hmm. which are sevens is the score. And then the next group up is scores eights. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we will go with the sevens. Uh, and yes. Yeah, so uh, 50 short course yard free. Thousand short course yard free male ooh, ooh, both ooh. yeah spicy there you go yeah fifty long course back male uh, fifty short course yard free female thousand short course yard free female mm. uh, fifty long course meter breaststroke uh, female two hundred short course yard breaststroke female spicy 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 mm. uh, fifty long course meter back uh, female. Yeah. So, first thing, right, Mm -hmm. with just that initial grouping, is the thing that jumps out, right, is the 2000s and the short course yard female breaststroke, right? Yep, yep. Okay, so, we'll get into this. (laughs) Just pointing them out that, that, yes, we noticed that. Yeah. Uh, And then the next grouping, uh, there are four. Mm -hmm. uh, 200 short course yard breaststroke male, 200 long course meter breaststroke male, 200 long course meter fly male. Mm Mm-hmm. 100 short course yard breast female. Okay. Okay. So, one, why is the 100 short course yard breast ranked harder than the 200 short course yard breast stroke? For men or female or both? Well, so like, right, you have the, uh, the 200 still... short course yard breast stroke yeah. down rank below the 100 short course yard breast stroke. I still think it has stuff to do with power production. I think it's right, yeah. like energy system. Yeah, yeah it's like because yeah. the. I think in, in yards, yeah, the athletes have gotten good enough, right? It's mm-hmm. like when you watch the NBA where dudes are like shooting for the logo, yeah. right? Yeah. Like there's just this adaptation. It's like, okay, cool. We figured out that it's actually more efficient to just go underwater. underwater. So yeah. we're just going to go underwater for as long as humanly possible. Yep. And that's just going to lend itself to like bigger, stronger, better athletes. Yeah. yeah. Right? So the 200 is easier for a sprinter to fake mm-hmm. than the 100. Yeah. Because there's just... They have the speed, and they go out, mm-hmm. and they, they're strong, and they yeah. just hold their line, yeah. and they try to survive. Yeah. And they either survive or they don't. Yeah. 
Yeah. But like either way, it's like they can just throw it out there with mm. like a base minimum of speed. Yeah. Whereas like the hundred, they have to be flying. Yeah. Right. Like yeah. watch how Lily King swims that. Like you have to be going full board to yeah. keep up with her. Yeah. Versus the two hundred, where it's like I feel like she has more variance there. Mm. Where it's like, in order for her to go the time that she wants to go in the hundred. Yeah. It's there's there's less variance. There's more things that have to go right. Yeah. Whereas yeah. the two hundred, there are more things that could go wrong. True. Which is why I also have the thousands ranked where I have them. Okay. Because I think that the thousands are, I mean, they would devastate me, but again, I wasn't very good. (laughs) (laughs) It would really hurt me because um, I was like, you know, a not terribly athletic white dude who just like basically grinded out. Worked hard. Yeah. Just hard worker. Doing that grind. Yeah. But it's like, I noticed the people who would have to swim up to the mile yeah could just they could fake a thousand like that yeah like yeah. october i'm in october shape yeah i'll throw down a thousand yeah right it's not that hard yeah and you would watch dudes uh, like i remember when i was swimming coming up it was like you would watch people do things where it was like they'd throw in a 10 second negative split and dust everybody at some dual yeah. meet, right and then Jumping turn cool. right Exactly. Supposedly, according to Swim Swam, I, which is I one saw of your that. favorite things, that yes, the COVID nineteen I, I virus cannot be transmitted through pools. I, I mean, Do you believe that? well, how many pools are actually chemically treated at the right point to begin with? <laughs> uh, no, I mean, so like when you look at something like that, and okay, and this is I'm gonna get a this is perfect. I can quote Twain now. Uh, you know, there's lies, nice. lies, damn lies, and statistics. <laughs> and as someone who deals with data and statistics, and has been through grad school, it's like I can make numbers say all sorts of things anything you want anything you want really i mean obviously like this podcast is literally a function of that yep where i get to take shots at the 50 swimmers yep (laughs) actually no it wasn't even meant to be y'all y'all just got caught in the crossfire yeah it was really i wanted to make fun of uh although i I do think right where did i rank the 200 fly I think it's upright. For women. Yeah, I think I ranked that higher than I did for men. Mm -hmm. I felt like it was a harder event for women. Appreciate it. I mean, I just think it is. I think think the speed... So, and again, this is a male-female thing where Mm -hmm. it's like... Yeah. I I think that, you know, when you look at men swimmers versus women swimmers, it's like, yes, while Kelsey Worrell is a phenomenal, huge, strong athlete. Like, I mean, she could dominate me like <laughs> in a physical fight I yeah, think, yeah, right like yeah. she is a huge strong athlete when you watch like tom shields swim butterfly mm-hmm. like he is there's just so much power yeah. being generated yeah but then again that goes back to our whole conversation where it's like if you can't generate that much power but you have to swim the same distance yeah then you have to have more adaptation mm-hmm. for that event yeah so that's why the uh, the men's 200 breaststroke, and really, honestly, I probably, if I had to do this, if I had to break I these two think, out, though, I think the 200 men's breaststroke long mm-hmm. course is harder than short course, because same thing we were talking about. The only thing that I think I ranked it higher mm-hmm. with was, actually, it looks like we got tied across the board, but yeah. I think that, like, with the 200 short course breaststroke for men, like, the pullout game at this point, like, these guys are so good coming off the walls. Well, that's and what I was going to so say. so powerful. Yeah. Like, and the intensity that it takes to, like, rip through. And actually for them, there's also the hype. I think that's why I ranked it the same for the endurance factor was the hypoxic element of it. Yeah. That you just have to, like, even though you're only taking four strokes a length. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You still have to train yourself to have these like four explosive strokes and you only get four breaths mm-hmm. and then a breath on the turn. Yeah. And then you have to push out and pull out to 15 meters. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah. No, and that's where I feel like it also depends on how you are swimming breaststroke technically because a Lily King's breaststroke at 100 uh-huh. is a very different stroke than a Kevin Cordes breaststroke at a 200. At a, yeah. and it, Or even at 100. Yeah. Like even like compare them side to side. Mm-hmm. Right. Like his is going to be a different 
Well, he's way more like on a hypoxic scale right. than she is, who, you know, her tempo is just extremely high. Dominating. Yeah. Is so powerful. Like Adam Peaty. So it, they, I, can... I was lucky enough to watch her swim age group because she yeah. grew up just up the road in, I think it was, I think it was Newburgh. Okay. I feel like that was right. The Newburgh Sea Creatures. Yeah. Yes. That's who it was. I'm almost positive that's where she swam club yeah. growing up. Yeah. Because uh, Kenny Loman, who just finished her career at Texas yeah. uh, this past year. Um, they were kind of like, you know, similar age groups, so yeah. it was like they would be at our, like, OVC meet and stuff mm-hmm. like that. Okay. Uh, yeah, she was always like that, though. And then she got to, I will say, they did a great job with her in Indiana. Yeah. Because, like, she was good coming out of high school. Yeah. And, like, I mean, she was a really tough swimmer. I mean, like, Caleb was great coming out of high school, right? But, mm-hmm. I mean, they were similar levels where yeah. it was like she had kind of started to ramp up maybe, I think, towards the end of her senior year. Mm-hmm. But then, like, she got to Indiana and... Yeah. Like, yeah. I don't know. They Literally. they were able to teach her how to generate power. Yeah. So that is also, too, like, some of the limitations of generic rankings where mm-hmm. it's like, yeah. the way Lily King swims 100 breaststroke is different than the way any other, like, probably 100 breaststroke female swimmer is really legitimately swimming. Swimming, right? yeah. Right? Like, yeah. she's able to generate so much more, which is evident in the significance and the variance between the first and second place swimmer, yes. right? Where yes. she's like three body lengths ahead and yeah. it's like you're watching her swim and it's like, oh my gosh, she's like a body length at the 25. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, that's just a different, yeah. th- that's a different kind of athlete. Mm-hmm. It's like watching the NBA and watch LeBron and you're like, I am. I'm not the same species as, <laughs> as the that same person. As you. That person took four steps yeah. from the opposite three court line and yeah. dunked it. Yep, yeah. true. That's that's not a real thing. Yeah. Uh, but I feel like that way about you know the way some of these people are able to swim yeah. these events where yeah. it's just like I don't know. Maybe we need to have like a 250 breaststroke. That would be interesting. Right? Yeah. Like, what if you did it as, if you really wanted to incorporate the 50s, mm-hmm. right? What if you did it this way? This is totally off the cuff, by the way. Yeah. What if you did it, if you wanted to incorporate all the 50s, mm-hmm. and we're going to have a four-day meet, five-day meet, yeah. whatever, yeah. right? I mean, like, track is, like, yeah. a week, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. So, what if we did 50, 150, 250 of the strokes? Interesting. Yeah. 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 I think you could still keep 50, 100, 200... 500. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You could add a 350 maybe. If you want to. <laughs> how hard would that butterfly. How hard would No, no, for freestyle, freestyle. Oh, freestyle. Okay. How hard would that be though? The 350, right? What would yeah. the best guys go? So, if you went like 45, 48, 48, 23. 45, 48, So that's 15, this is great, like watching me do math. 15, 41, 48, like two, under, so like two, but then, so 330 would be a minute, and you're, what did I say, 48 under? So 18 under a minute, so 242, maybe? I said 232, yeah. 232? Yeah. I mean, I don't know, maybe those guys will go that fast. Maybe people will go 44, 47, 46. So wait, question. So you say that you think that the anaerobic energy system is involved on all race distances. What do you mean by that? Because some people think that when you tap out of your anaerobic energy system, you immediately go into the aerobic one for the longest ones, even though they do kind of work coincidingly. Side well, side. okay, so I think about it like this. Like, your body is probably going to be constantly accumulating lactic acid yeah. no matter what event you're swimming. Yeah. Right? And I think the shorter events, I mean, it, and again, these rankings are done with, like, high level like mm-hmm. i'm not talking about how a 13 year old boy swims the two fly like he's gonna be like, i'm scared True. <laughs> it's gonna hurt yep right yep. yeah it's like i'm talking about people that are like yo i'm about to like ball out on this two fly yeah right yeah. and like that's how you swim it um so in terms of like so do you just oh. feel like an, an endurance swimmer is better at shuttling out lactate than a shorter? I think that swimmer? their red line is higher, right? Uh-huh. Like you have to think about, I think about it like this and I've always thought about it like this in terms of like anaerobic adaptation. It's uh-huh. like the better you are, the more you are adapting, the more you are able to hold higher levels of speed with mm-hmm. less lactic acid building. Yeah. Because ultimately 
what you're doing is you're trying to not hit failure or hit failure at a point where you can power through like the last little bit. You're trying to rev your engine all the way up. Yeah. And I think that like the fifties don't allow you to do that. Mm -hmm. Right. Which is why I have them ranked so low in that capacity, like for lactate where it's like, you are literally only able to get, you are only able to generate a certain amount of lactic acid yeah. during those races mm -hmm. versus like a 200 race. Yeah. yeah. And especially a long axis 200 race mm -hmm. where you have these huge quads. Look yeah. at these, look at these big babies right here, right? Solid. Yeah. They are generating some lactic acid, yeah. right? And constantly, like yeah. think about how hard you're hammering, which is why Eddie does like what? Like tons of freestyle kick. Yeah. The 20, right? 25 butterfly kick. Yeah. Or that too. Right. Like, yeah. can I just like get them to like snap, 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 right? Yeah. Like force your muscles to learn to adapt to those things. Yeah. Right. But then like, I mean, I'll still never forget this, like coaching where I just decided I'm like, all right, I really think that my kids, like I had a really talented group of 13 and 14 year olds. Yeah. Uh, a lot of whom were females and they were just talented. And I yeah. was like, well, I don't want to screw them up. Yeah. So we're just going to do a ton of freestyle kick. Yeah. Just lots. Yeah. A third of every workout. <laughs> hard yeah. freestyle. No easy. Yeah. Yeah. Just hard freestyle kick. Yeah. We were so good in the 200 that year. Yeah. 200 free. Yeah. Everybody had a great 200 free. There you go. Everybody. Yeah. A hundred percent. Yeah. Right. And so it's just like, I think that, and, and again, like, you know, I, I hopefully carried that lesson forward and continued to do a lot more kick. And yeah. it's like, you really see the effectiveness of it, mm -hmm. I think. Yeah. Um, so yeah, yeah. I, th I think that those events, it's like the more anaerobic they are, there's also more like rest in each stroke. Mm -hmm. Right. So like even butterfly, like two kick, one pull. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And one of the kicks is really you're just reaching your body forward. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And the other you're snapping through. Yeah. Right? So you get that power and you're generating that power. Mm -hmm. But every single time you generate that power, you're generating way more force and distance per kick, mm -hmm. I guess you would say, than like the average freestyle kick. Yeah. Because you're doing three kicks, freestyle kicks, with every one pull. Yeah. Yeah. Right, and you're getting over on that side, and you're reaching out, so you're not generating near as much power, but the tempo is so much higher. Yeah, like relative, like where you're getting both sides over over yeah. a longer axis. Yeah, than what you are, and you don't want to overswim those butterfly strokes, right? Mm -hmm. The whole point is yeah. like, can I generate as much power as possible and generate as much distance per stroke as possible? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So less rest in between kicks and freestyle, and then a little bit more of a break between your very intense kicks. Right, yeah, and yeah. then think about breaststroke too, even more so. Yeah. Right, like those breaststrokers, like their heels are all the way up to their butt and they're exploding through. Mm. And I, again, yoga. I've noticed like how to, I finally figured this out, which some coaches would have taken some yoga classes, <laughs> done some master swimming. We're Come not on, getting man. into the coaching lifestyle. Yeah, like, right now. I know, right? It, no. it is a brutal lifestyle. That's why I left. It's rough. I know, that's yeah. why I left. You couldn't do um, yoga when you were coaching, could I, you? I did, I did not. I did it every once in a while, I think. I like, was able to go. There was a place that near, was nearby us yeah. on Wednesdays. Yeah. But it wasn't a very intense class. It wasn't no. like my power at yoga right now, yeah. which is canceled, which I didn't go to last week, even yeah. though it wasn't canceled. Oh, that's so nice. I was like, eh, nah, it's probably... Not right. Probably not where I need to be. Nope. Nope. Intentional breathing. So what have you learned from yoga? Uh, like just the very end of the breaststroke kick. Yeah. Like you can feel this like tilting of the hips and it's like, it just, once you learn that, it just drives you all the way forward and you're getting just so much more. And all these people, yeah. it's like, they're so intuitive with their strokes. Like they're so good at like leveraging and powering all the way through like, yeah. into the stroke. But it's like the best short axis swimmers seem like they're just generating so much power. Mm. So again, that's where they rank really high in intensity. Yeah. Um, but then it's kind of like you just have this, it's more you're generating efficiency gains yeah. rather than like ad adapting to the training that you would need to do to be successful. Like that's why I have the 200 free ranked higher than the 200 rest. Mm. Right. Because it's like that yeah. adaptation that's going to have to go into that. In addition to the same intensity, if not more intensity. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Whereas this is just like every, it's like doing a set of like hang cleans like yeah. over and over and over again. True. Yeah. Do you feel like there is a level event or a threshold that, so if we're talking about people that are, you know, more on the elite side for this event ranking list, can they get to the point where their body has adapted and it can't really adapt any more from a training perspective? So then they have to go to the kind of the other disciplines like efficiency. I'm assuming you mean is technique. 
So well, yeah. Like well, and that's that. the, yeah, I think Versus that. Versus grinding I, out or. I mean, I think that you see, and again, maybe this is where you see more variance in terms of who wins the men's 200 freestyle than yeah. you see who wins the men's 200 butterfly. Yeah. Or, you know, same thing with women's, right? It's yeah. like there's more people that can get in that race. Mm-hmm. So I think the the fact that like the best athletes seem to gravitate towards some of those events right mm-hmm. like Chad LeClose he's beat Phelps but like yeah I think he really has a soft spot he wants to race that 200 free right yeah. because he's like yo the best dudes are in that yeah and I want to beat all them yeah and so I think it lends itself to a little bit of that where you get a lot of convergence mm-hmm. and these people are able to adapt into that and that's kind of like that final frontier where it's like hey I can win the 200 fly yeah or can I get up and you know be, I don't know, a dude who's now banned for eight years <laughs> in the 200 free. Yeah, true. Fair enough. Adaptation. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I- well, not Icarus, it's Icarus. Icarus. Flew close, flew too close to the sun. Oh. The Greek legend. Didn't know. Yeah. yeah. He, uh, he had wings. He flew too, too close to the sun. Yeah. That his wings melted. He fell back down to earth. Oh, yeah. Never it's a moral out. tale. Oh, okay. Right. Cool. Don't, don't overstretch yourself beyond what, you know, is reasonable. Hmm. You shouldn't fly to the sun. Yeah. It's hot. Uh, it will burn you. Did you want to go to the moon? There's a Japanese billionaire that's looking for his plus one. His plus one? To go to the moon. I mean, you like, how's his English? Because I'm going to need to be able to talk. <laughs> I mean, seriously. like You I can feel... seriously apply, though. There's an application. That's online. an application process? Yeah. I wonder what, like, is He has the... an extra seat to the moon. Do you think he's using first... ZipRecruiter? <laughs> Because I get lots of advertisements on podcasts about that. I feel like we should give an organic plug for them. Zip Recruiter? Zip Recruiter. They, they've been Make all of your pro- hiring processes easier. <laughs> right? Zip Recruiter. I mean, Belgium, seriously, though, like, what, what would be the criteria for that? Uh, no, it's based off of, it's like basically his finding his true love. So he has all this money. He made some sort of Japanese clothing line. He's a billionaire. Mm-hmm. And he has never met the love of his life. He gave his whole, like, Wait, energy. is this, like, this The is Bachelor? Real. Yeah, but it's... On like, the moon. On the moon. <laughs> There's, like, a six-month process to this application. Are, where please you, like, tell me they're filming it. Him. Please tell me they're filming it. They yeah, have to be, know. right? It's, Big Brother no, style or I something. I think NBC right? or something, like, endorsed it. I but. mean, at a certain point, someone has to get this content. He's going to be on the moon? What does he care? He and then you that. have to go into the training to actually be able to go to the moon right. with the guy prior to actually going on. It's, like, 2022. So the problem is is there's lots of, like, weird physiological effects that would happen if you lived on the moon because the gravity's so much lower. Yeah. So it's, well, like... Well, this is just, like, the SpaceX. You're going up, going around, and coming back down. It's oh, like, he's not going to live there. I no. thought he was going to, like, live on no, the moon. No, 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 no. He's like going up to the moon on one of the very first sh- flights and he wants someone to go with him. It's so bizarre. Yeah. So, anyways. Back to what we were talking about where it's like you have the adaptation. Yeah. You have the, um, the athleticism required and I think that these are like the, the almost Cadillac events. If that makes sense. So for people that are watching us, I'm Abby Fish. This is... Nate Knopf, what's up? And we are ranking, or talking about an event ranking list mm-hmm. that Nate created for swimming events. And we're currently on categories. Uh, three and four. So, we like, I ranked them with uh, three um, criteria, lactate, intensity, endurance, one to five, summed them, sorted them, ranked them, and then the rankings ended up grouping as one would expect when you only have a one to 15 scale. True. Uh, or zero, I suppose, but no, no event got a zero. I think the lowest score was like a five, yeah. maybe. And again, those were mostly the fifties. We talked about that, mm-hmm. um, with with just being more functions of athleticism. And then you had the next group, which just had some like weird grouping, which is like yeah. where we probably got off course. Uh, but so again, we'll we'll run through this uh, real quick. So. All right, so 100 short course yard free, male. 100 short course yard breast, male. 400 long course meter free, female. 100 long course meter breast, female. Mm. 100 long course meter back, female. 500 short course yard, female. Uh, Kind of the same thing where we're going... Oh, wait, did we miss the... Oh, we did miss fives, which is also 400 short course yard, I am female. 200 short course yard, I am female. 100 short course yard, back female. 200 long course breast, female. 200 long course meter fly, female. 800 meter long course free, female. 100 long course meter breast, male. 800 long course meter free, male. 1650 free, 
male. Yeah. Uh, we're all tied together. And again, a lot of the reason that I'm reading like female and male, it's like they're all tied with the exact same score. Uh, and it was just like a function of how I set the events up when I ordered them. Mm. So it's really more of a filter sorting yeah. Excel thing. Yeah. Don't take it personal. <laughs> what i'm saying we, we, just have to, a, we just have a random question actually i did uh like i did ones and twos because it's easier to do things numerically in spreadsheets initially true uh so females were number one i just want to point that out women run the world yeah exactly. run the world girls girls so like i mean i think a lot of the things jump out it's like you know the miles end up hitting here where it's like traditionally people have been like oh those are the hardest events and yeah. it's like listen i was a distant swimmer i do not think that those are the hardest events yeah I mean, they're not. They probably require the most aerobic ability. Yeah. But I don't think that that's a whole lot different than the... They require aerobic ability and then, like, adaptation. Mm -hmm. But then a lot of times beyond that, it's like... I think that you have to, with some of the more, like, mid-range events, you have to have more... You have to get the same amount of aerobic adaptation and more anaerobic adaptation. Yeah. Where it's like to like be successful in that. Like yeah. Both systems have to fire. Yeah. Whereas like maybe your it's like a diminishing law of returns, mm. right? With like distance swimming, where it's like yeah, you only need like you have to hammer out this aerobic. It's so hard. Yeah. And then past that, it's like okay, mm. you're you're kind of where you're at. Yep. Right. Yep. Um, so it's not too dissimilar then to mm. like the way the fifties are. Yeah. Um, the difference is, is like doing two of those is devastating, which is why it's like, yeah. even at the top level events, it's like you do what you do in the morning and then the following evening. Yeah. And like, you always see the dudes or chicks in seven and eight, right. Who yeah. like killed to get in there. They're dead. Yeah. <laughs> Just toast. Yeah. Yep. Right. Or toast. it's like the guy yeah. who qualified eighth like yeah knew his position in his heat and was like yeah, yeah. i can go this and yeah. like i'll be good and qualify eighth yeah and then i'm gonna ball out but yeah. then that guy who got sixth yeah who was killing him <laughs> all right great swim dead <laughs> adds 35 seconds <laughs> true right you yep. just can't repeat that yeah. right yeah but then at the same note like getting to that level i feel like yeah it is requires less than getting to the top level of the Cadillac type events that True. we're talking about. Yeah. And you know, and that's kind of where you see like the hundreds kind of falling in there too, mm -hmm. right? A lot of hundred freestyles, a lot of hundred breaststrokes. Yeah. Because I think that like with those, um, I think that there's speed. I think that there's intensity. Yeah. Uh, which again, an intensity is kind of this generic thing mm -hmm. that I, I use to kind of quantify a bit of an X factor. Yeah. Um, so it's not a perfect score again. So what swimming events are ranked one and two? Well, okay. we can go all the way up to the top. Uh, so I think there are three that are tied at 14. Uh -huh. The female long course meter 200 freestyle, the male long course meter 200 freestyle, and the male 200 short course yard freestyle. So and it's the, all the, the, the female 200 short course is like one point less. So okay. it's like... I, it, touch lower yeah um and again i, I think that I, i've kind of always said that those are the cadillac races yeah. i think that you can do anecdotal and you can do you know like quantifiable like the most number of people swim those yeah like, if i want to i know you wanted to talk about this so we can actually use this as a good segue yeah uh right to talk about if you wanted to rank how mm. successful uh, a region was yeah in producing elite level swimmers that mm -hmm. would go on from the high school level to the college level yeah and be really successful yeah you would do a and you had to pick one event yeah men and women yeah you'd pick the 200 free okay because the most number of people are going to be able to swim their way into a 200 freestyle mm -hmm. and what you end up having is you have this like convergence of like you have these really good athletes that are mm -hmm. like boom, they're all swimming. And it's like, this person might specialize in a hundred, hundred yard backstroke, mm -hmm. but they got a lot of speed and freestyle and they can get up there and they're going to yeah. tangle with some yeah. of these other people who are a hundred yard butterflyer mm -hmm. and, you know, or like close, like, yeah. right? Like yeah. he's a perfect example of like, mm -hmm. 
why are you even training for the 200 free? Because the yeah. 200 free is something that you can train for and then train to do the 200 fly too. Mm -hmm. So maybe his, free, maybe his freestyle training is actually more beneficial for him than his fly. Because yeah. he can't just do fly all day long. No, yeah. And so it's like it's actually better. And that's where, I mean, we figured this out a while ago in coaching where it was like, if you just train everybody basically for the 200 free, yeah. you're probably going to be good at almost everything. Yeah. Because... They can swim that Cadillac race, and mm. if they can swim that, they can swim everything else because it is yeah. the hardest race. Yeah. So if you trained everybody for that, mm -hmm. then the 400 IM is like whatever, right? I can do the 200 free. The yeah. third 50 of the 200 free is – actually, it's not the third 50. I think it's from the 125 to the 175. The, yeah. I would agree with that. Because everybody's so like, oh, the last 50. I'm like, listen, if you can be picking it up at the 150, then you yeah. can save it up. Yeah, true. Yeah. You know, it needs to be to where you get to that 175 and then you're like, I got to just like hold on <laughs> yeah, for so, another 12 seconds. <laughs> yeah. As much as I can. It's just like, hold on. Yeah. Yeah. So wait, so why, so why the 200 free? Why is that? Well, so we talked a little bit about, I think in the last one where we talked about the difference between short axis and long axis, where yeah. it's like you have the three kicks, right? You're generating, it's... It, it's the race where you're generating the most amount of speed and force for mm -hmm. the longest amount of time. Yeah. And so we kind of talked about where it's like, especially for like lactate intensity mm -hmm. and endurance factor, something that satisfies all three. Yeah. It's kind of like a race where you're trying to redline it mm -hmm. to the point of complete engine failure. Yeah. And I think the 200 freestyles, that, that is like the mm -hmm. best ones. And I do think that there's a sociological factor where it's like because everybody can swim a 200 free who's like a top level athlete. Yeah. You end up with a lot more people swimming it. Yeah. And so it's a much more competitive race and it generates relays. Yeah. Right? Um, and That's so true. I think you can get 400 on Amherst swimming it. You can get 100 mm -hmm. freestylers swimming it. You can yeah. get 200 to strokes. Yeah. Right? They yeah. can all transition because they're, they're all at some point doing some form and fashion of 200 freestyle training. Mm -hmm. Why do you think that... Because I was actually writing a blog post about this yesterday on freestyle. And mm -hmm. um, why do you think if it's a long axis stroke, then why aren't we training more backstroke? I think we should. Especially yeah. backstroke fins. Uh, backstroke with fins for little kids. Yeah. You should do a ton of that. Yeah. All the time. Yeah. Constantly. Because technically you should, you, do, go, you should do that more. variance you're talking about. Because So like, yeah, I think backstroke with mm -hmm. fins for like... I don't know, 12 and unders, really. Yeah. I mean, there's tons of it. Yeah. Why not? Yeah. That's it's what like, I've been doing a ton with, with my little kids, and we have a bunch of people on. Yeah, our group. it's like, because you're just building up right. strength in the legs. Yep. They're keeping a good line. They're working I think the part of the problem with doing overloading freestyle at a young age is that they, like, the head and the body get all out of whack. Yeah. And, and it's, just, it's just a breathing thing, right? They get yeah. out of breath. They want to breathe. They want to rest. Whereas, like, backstroke, it's like you can rest a little bit, like as a little kid, right? Mm -hmm. They can slow down, like, Whew. yeah. all right, I'm going to just, like, kind of kick for a little bit, slow my tempo down. Yeah. All right, now I can pick it back up again. I feel better. Yeah. And they won't screw up their, you know, whole stroke. Yeah. So, yeah, I think, I think I definitely think you should. I mean, yeah. like, that was a big thing that, like, uh, I remember when Anthony Irvin kind of like jumped on the scene at Cal. Mm -hmm. They were kind of talking about, I think Bottom was out there at that point. Yeah. Um, and he had trained him and like they were doing, it, it was like really where the the sprint, kind of like the mindset behind a sprinter. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think it had kind of started maybe at Auburn a little bit and yeah. like some of these other places. Actually, really, a deep cut. Deep cut. Here we go. Uh, Hot so take. This, hey, God, I cannot think of the guy's name. He wrote a book, and it was like the book on sprinting, and he did yeah. it in the early 80s. He was down at like uh, LSU and I think Arkansas, and then was like... I know who you're talking about. Yeah. Somewhere, some school in Texas, and I do not remember what school it was. It might have been SMU, but yeah. I don't think that's right. Yeah. Uh, but anyways, he was doing that way before, where it was just like, yo, we're just going to sprint. We're yeah. sprint all the time. And he was actually the one where it was like, 200 freestyle at that point had been the exclusivity of like a mm. distant swimmer or just like top level athlete like yeah. Mark Spitz. Yeah. Right. Like I'm Mark Spitz. Of course I'm going to win the two free. Yeah. Like, I'm going to get out here and whip all y'all. <laughs> right. But yeah. like before that, like, with I mean, the with the exception of these, like, oh yeah, right, just dominated. Yeah. Like, but it had mostly been like thought of as like a distance race and he was like false. And he's yeah. like, I will prove it to you. And he did this thing where it was like, I'm going to have my sprinters just like, we're going to do an 800 freestyle relay and they had some really good distance swimmers yeah and they were like distance swimmers versus sprinters yeah 
And he told the sprinters, he was like, listen, pride's on the line, guys. Yeah. Like, get up and let's go. Yeah. And so he, every single dude was just like, flying yeah. on the way out. And it was yards, yeah. right? Uh, and they just sprinted. They were just like, yeah, I'm going to sprint the 200 freestyle. Yeah. Hard as I can. Yeah. Till I die. Yeah. And that's how he taught them how to do it. And yeah. they dominated the distance runners. Mm. Killed them. <laughs> right? Because it was yeah. just like, they just, you know... The distance guy on the first one, like, he gets wrecked the first hundred, right? And yeah. he's creeping back into it, but he's not very close. Or, like, you know, gets maybe up to, like, the guy's hip. Yeah. And then they dive in, and the yeah. same thing happens again. But now you're even further ahead, and you're further in that wake. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And so it just kind of became this mindset. But then, like, you know, fast forward to, like, Irvin at Cal. Yeah. And they were just like, yeah, all we do when we swim freestyle is, like, we're doing full speed. Yeah. Like, we are not training to do, you know... The in between, we are yeah. training full speed. Yeah. So like, I think that there is lessons to be learned from that. Whereas like, all of his like aerobic swimming, I think he did, and like easy swimming, he would just do his like backstroke. Yeah. And probably pulling on the lane line and all that whatever. jazz. Right. Yeah. I mean, but it was like, yeah. yeah, he needed to swim it out for a little while, and maybe yeah. he needed to do some easy swimming. Yeah. Some aerobic. Yeah. But why screw up your freestyle stroke when you're trying to train to breathe? four times and or eight times in a hundred freestyle and zero times in a 50 freestyle true why are you training to breathe all the time yeah yeah so yeah, yeah. but i mean so even with like a 200 freestyle you don't want to like with the little kids i think that's where they get all out of whack because when you're just doing like long freestyle with like no basis of support through the legs yeah like i don't think long freestyle is bad necessarily with fins yeah but I think it's probably just as good to go freestyle backstroke mix. Yeah. Because it's like, you just keep the head position more in line. Yeah. Like, there's more opportunities for them to just screw that up and to have it be bad mm -hmm. than there is for it to be, like, a positive aerobic experience that, like, benefits them more than the technical malfeasance that you just, you know, yeah. displayed. Yeah. In your coaching ignorance. <laughs> Get it together, people. <laughs> Quit having kids swim lousy freestyle. Yeah. Or you can put on snorkels. I mean, you can put like on snorkels. Snorkel. I love snorkels. I like a snorkel. I think snorkels are good. They the problem good. is, is like, so then you're getting into, and, and here's the thing, right? It's like, because I'm a, a parent right, yeah. of a swimmer yeah. now. I have a seven-year-old. So we bought the fins. Wyatt. Yeah, Wyatt, my son. Mm -hmm. um, he swam at Lakeside. Yeah. Uh, he swam this summer. Uh, he has fins, yeah. um, which are good. But, you know, like, it, it's like one of those things where it's like, it'd be better, really, to have a snorkel yeah. right now. Yeah. But, like, how do you tell parents who are like, hey, we're, you know, we're going two days a week. Yeah. Like, hey, you, get, you need to invest, like, $200 in equipment. Yeah. Right? I so mean, and, like, I would probably do it sport. because, again, I rank events on spreadsheets. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you're you're the different. I would do it, right? Swim parent. I mean, also I would like I worked at yeah. Swimville, right, for yeah. a minute. So. Yeah, yeah. Well, we have on the team that I coach for. So I coach basically the opposite team of Lakeside. It's called Triton. Um, we have our little kids have snorkels, and at first I was kind of like, why are our six year olds using snorkels? Well, if they get the snorkels without the thing at the bottom, I think they're a lot cheaper. I mean, yeah. I like those better. Yeah. I don't know why Without they, the little, yeah, the yeah. thing, it always gets broken and lost. It's like, I, yeah. and it makes the thing, it's like so much more complicated. Yeah. I remember, I think Swim Mac was on that for a minute. Like yeah. Marsh, the Marsh, tubes. yeah, the tube. Like Marsh found this dude in somewhere. Italy. Yeah. yeah I think, was it? Was it, it was Italy? In Italy. I, was, I felt like it was European. Yeah. Right? And they yeah, were just, small, it was just, they're thinner, so yeah, they were small, was, they were thin, they were yeah. cheap, right? Yeah. They were like so much cheaper than the Speedo ones. It yeah. was like. He's like, yes, I will be placing a bulk order. <laughs> Send them to me. I guess. I'm roughing focus in yeah. here. Yeah. Right? It's caffeinated water. It's good for you. <laughs> and what is it made out of? Uh, I don't know. It's like caffeinated sparkling water. We can get it's, Mary up in here. It's made out of green tea. Yeah, there you go. Boom. <laughs> See? That's um, it. It's good stuff, though. I mean, like, you know, you need it when you're staring at spreadsheets all day like I do for hours on end. True. Um, well, let's talk about socioeconomic status in swimming. Oh, okay, yeah. We're going to get the deep cut now. The deep, deep cut. I like We're it. We're talking about regions and socioeconomic okay, status. Okay, so we'll lead with the 200 freestyle, right? How yeah. I said that, like, if you wanted to pick, yeah. right? But then I think that that's, like, an interesting thing. Like, okay, what areas are, like, really uh, inducing fast swimming at a, like, broad scale, like... Lo like relative to uh, expectations, right? Yeah. If you have a city, two identical cities with mm -hmm. like X amount of socioeconomic value. Yeah. 
but there's large variances. Mm. Then what are then the other things that go around that? And then, so then I think that we, we've talked about like Australia yeah. as a good example of yeah. this. Like yeah. big, very affluent cities. Mm-hmm. Like most of their population is kind of centered in these cities and all these cities are the centered around the coast, right? Yeah. So I think that, you know, if you, and I think it's the same with like the East Coast, right? You, it's a much higher population density mm-hmm. than I think people really realize. Yeah. And I think proximity to water, like being near the beach. Yeah. Growing up near the ocean. Yeah. Right? So it's like, yeah, I mean, D.C., Baltimore, it's like they're just around the water all yeah. the time. Yeah. Right? And, yeah. and like water is a constant thing that they are dealing with. So your kids mm-hmm. are taught to swim at a very young age. Yeah. Florida. Right? Yeah. Um, and then, but so then I think, and then there's a little chicken in the egg, right? So it's like, all right, so you start off with that, let's mm-hmm. say. Mm-hmm. Like if, I, if I'm picking my city that I want to found this one team in, right? You start yeah. with that where it's just like a large percentage of the population. Um you know, is swimming at a young age, is mm. comfortable in the water. Yeah. Right? So then, like, that influences, like, the number of learn-to-swim programs that yeah. you're going to have. Because yeah. that's going to be something that's a larger need. Mm. And then the competition is more fierce. And the people are, you know, exchanging more information and they're better swim programs, right? So those yeah. things, like, build on each other. And they can be hyper-localized, right? It's mm. like, and let you'd only see a few really franchised swim things, right? Mm-hmm. You have like Swim America and a couple others, like they have the swim labs now. Yeah. Um, but I mean, I think that even within those, there's a large variance of like how you're going to apply it and how you're going to do it. Yeah. And still we consider that. So yeah. I think that like that then generates more competition amongst the swim labs and the swim Americas and the mom and pop shops and even like the local YMCA's. Yeah. Yeah. All the things. Right. Mm -hmm. And so then like more people are learning and it's like you quickly then jump into summer league swimming. And so then it's like, okay, what factors need to exist for like successful summer leagues to be around? Mm -hmm. And it seems like you need kind of like a suburban type environment. Yeah. You need swimming pools. True. Right. Which means you need a certain amount of wealth. Yeah. Right. And so I think that you see, and listen, I know this from like recruiting, right? Like we went to the summer leagues and the country clubs and it's like, you're talking about people who are at least like reasonably affluent, depending on which club summer league you're at. Mm. Right. I mean, like there's some of them in Louisville that it's like everybody there's loaded. Yeah. Right. Like you don't even get it. Like we don't let you in the door unless you can drop stacks. Yeah. (laughs) Just like, like, yeah. If you have to ask how much it is. Yeah. You don't, you don't want to belong here. <laughs> you don't want to know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. So I think that you have that, and like that's not all of the places, and that's not everything. Because I mean, you yeah. have neighborhood swim leagues, and you have YMCA mm-hmm. leagues, and you have a lot of different ways. But it's like there's just even like a certain amount of affluence that goes into like having a pool in your neighborhood. Yeah. True. Right. Like how many pools are really in the West Louisville? That like have, I mean, we have the team now, which I mean, I think is awesome. Yeah. And I'm so glad that they've done something like that. But again, that pool has been around for forever. Yeah. Right. And so they're finally able to like yeah. get some utilization out of that. Meanwhile, like Mary T is overutilized. Yeah. Right. To the point where it's probably need, you need to like back off of it because it's going to like fall apart one day. <laughs> right. I mean, all these pools are because they're overutilized. Right. Yeah. So it's like yeah. then you end up with, uh, that's where it's like the conditions that go into then generating a strong base, mm-hmm. right? Because then think about how a swim team is built. How many kids are in the lower levels, mid levels, top levels, right? Yeah. It's a pyramid. Yep. And, and you're going to get kids that fall off and they still stay involved in swimming. Maybe they swim the Catholic school meet, right? Which I yeah. coach. Yeah. Go Falcons. Uh, right. Holy spirit. Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> No, I mean, terrible right? They, yeah, they terrible. Are, terrible. Yeah, I mean, but no, they like stay involved in them with that. Right? Yeah. They do that, and yeah. then maybe they swim their summer league team, and yeah. you know, maybe they do whatever, right? Yeah. And you know, they bounce in and around. They stay involved in it, which is good. Yeah, right? it, just, yeah. it keeps the interest going and everything. But in terms of like, you see kids fall off as you go up, yeah. right? So it's like, but you, that means you need to start off with that base in order to end up with that top. Yeah, if you don't have that base, and then that's where it's like communities that don't have enough Mm -hmm. base it's like you see their team struggle to produce consistently yeah because it's like you don't have then that like at lakeside we had the group of people where it was like everybody was up they're coming in by the way yeah uh like they're you know people are about creatures are about to come in the door 
Um, but you just have like everything up at the top, yeah. right? And it's like those people were competing against each other. Like you yeah. were competing against other athletes, mm-hmm. like in your peer group that yeah. made you better. Yes, one hundred percent. Right. Wow. Whereas, like, I mean, and I remember. Hey, why? Hi. Uh, like I remember when I was in Shelbyville. Yeah. So for those who don't know, Shelbyville is a small town outside of Louisville. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it is a fairly small, uh, rural, mostly rural type community. It's probably built up a little bit more in the past 15 years. Yeah. Oh, but certainly when I was swimming there, I mean, like, so we were talking about like conditions that like generate uh, success in swimming. Yeah. Um, I mean, so, right, it's kind of a little chicken in the egg, right? Does yeah. the base then allow for top senior level swimming to happen or does the senior level swimming like generate an interest in the sport that then filters down yeah or do both of those things happen simultaneously yeah so then what you end up with is you need like a situation where you have good coaching right Mm -hmm. to take advantage of that yeah and then you have uh an interest in the sport yeah by and like i will say louisville is helped by the fact that we are by the ohio river right? yeah and like people grew up going to the rivers and it's yeah. like you know or like there has been swimming interest for a while yeah for whatever reason it's kind of just like a thing that's mm. what it, it, we don't have a lot of pools really so it's kind of actually weird that we do have as much swimming here as we have true right so i think that you end up with situations where it's a hard thing for it to organically happen yeah i think that's like the big takeaway right Mm -hmm. uh and that if you're going to generate interest in swimming communities that do not traditionally have interested parties you have to ask yourself why are they not interested swimming's fun yeah if you put a pool around people people will go swim true they will go to the pool they will play they will have fun yeah right uh, I mean, like, in Shelbyville, like, we were right next to a very working class area of town, mm-hmm. and in the summer when it was, like, open and everything was, like, yeah. cracking, I, it was, like, the place was packed yeah. with all sorts of people that you would not see at, like, a country club type swimming pool, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. so it's very much, like, it can happen, mm-hmm. but the situation has to, I don't know if you want to say force, but you, you have to do something different if you want different results. True. Like, to say, like, the clinics and the things are good, but you're not really generating sustainable results. Yeah. Right? Because yeah. you're not changing anything systematically. Yeah. There's nothing about, like, are you going to invest in pools in neighborhoods that are traditionally underserved? Yeah. Um, you know, are you going to, like, offer lower rates? Are you going... Like, how are you going to uh, generate, I, I guess you want to call it almost an economic advantage, mm. um, beyond what is you know, beyond the system where it seems to be like summer leagues and areas that can afford neighborhoods that can afford to build a pool in the neighborhood. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And if you live in that neighborhood, then you automatically belong to that. And there's a neighborhood fee. Yeah. And only a certain number of people are going to be able to afford that. So if you can afford to live in that neighborhood, then you can swim. Yeah. So then how are we going to like generate interest in swimming beyond you know, the organic way that it is produced. You know, that's yeah. where, like, I think we talked last night a little bit when we were prepping for this, uh, Tad, like, about soccer. Yeah. Like, you get a soccer, you, here's the goal, we're playing. Yep. Doesn't matter how good you are. Yeah. Like, you can get Messi out there. Yeah. With a soccer ball and a net. Mm-hmm. And he can practice and he can do things. Yeah. You don't need this huge yeah. get up. No. No. Uh, so I think that like sports like that, baseball, they, they, baseball even like you need yeah. a bat and a ball and a yeah. field. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Football. You need a ball. Yeah. You need a field. True. You need some space. That's yeah. really it. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, mm-hmm. If you hear rustling off to the side, that's my son. He's in here watching us. Yeah. So I mean, I think that if you're going to tip the scales, then mm-hmm. for a sport that doesn't re- like takes a lot of different conditions yeah. to generate organic appeal yeah then i think that you have to figure out a way to tilt the scales in a way that generates that organic interest sustainably Mm -hmm. and i don't think that we've done a lot of investigation as to what that is and what that even looks like yeah right and so that's that's where I, i think i would like to see if we really want to truly grow the sport right it's like you know the law of diminishing returns right yeah. We, we've tapped out that whole summer league swim team thing. Right? Yeah. We, we've... Although I did get an email yesterday about a guy who's starting an adult 
summer league swim league but Ooh, it's pretty strong <laughs> I like that <laughs> it's all i, like I started that. out in charleston south carolina okay so once again coastal town went to atlanta nashville other big cities with people of high socioeconomic status and then i got called to see if i wanted to start one in louisville exactly so nate you want to bring it back no. So really swimming? 100 no. IM? You want to go? No. No, not at all. I swim. I feel like we can leave it on that. We went, I think that was a deep enough cut with the uh, the soapbox on socioeconomic status and, uh, you know, how we're going to generate new interest in swimming. We're really going to grow the sport, right? That's how it's going to be. You got to yeah. tap, you got to find untapped, you got to find untapped markets. True. Right? I mean, and any business consultant would tell you the exact same thing. Like, yeah. okay, cool. Like, how much have you gotten out of this market? Well, yeah. yeah. I don't know, 95%. <laughs> what yeah. about this market over here? Ah, 5%. Yeah. But we really think we can get that last 5% over here. Right? We're going to go for it. Let's do it. I'm like, uh, maybe you could just like build this up over here. Figure True. that out. True. Yeah. It might t- but the problem is, is that stuff takes a while, right? That's not a like quarterly report or not even a yearly thing, right? That's like a multi-year investment. Yeah. And I, I mean, I think you're seeing it here with the team that I think will be run out of Central. Um, yeah. God, who's the guy who's coaching that? Um, he coaches at Lakeside, right? Coached Douglas Hills for a while. I don't know. He's he's a teacher too. He's a good guy, and I'm sorry, buddy. I'm totally blanking on your name right now. I can see you plain as day. Yeah. Uh, but it's been like an hour long talking, so yeah. I'm fried at this well, point. Thanks, Nate. Thanks for joining us. Here. Social Isolation Podcast. Yes. We'll bring it back to you guys soon. Peace. <laughs>